Hello everyone and welcome to the Powering Up Your Formulations podcast, sponsored by BSF Formulation and Performance Additives North America. My name is Luis Angeles, uh, your host and marketing manager um, additives in North America. Today, I'm joined here by my colleague, Tony Moy, our technical specialist with BSF Formulation Additives. Hi, Tony. Could you please tell us more about your role and a little bit about yourself? Yes, hi, Louis. I'm happy to tell people about myself. My name is Tony Moy. I am the technical specialist for BASF formulation additives in North America, supporting industrial coatings market segment. I've been with BASF for 10 years and in the coating industry for 33 years. I'm located out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and one of my passions is solving problems in coatings using our broad array of formulation additives in our portfolio. Thanks for your introduction, Tony. Let's jump to our conversation, focus on our additives portfolio for epoxy applications. Epoxy coatings uh, has a significant footprint in the industrial coatings. Today, we are going to talk about their importance in the market. The global epoxy coating market is projected to grow uh, at a compound annual growth rate of 5.2% from the, in the period from 2021 to 2028. As you can see in the chart uh, below in the right side, uh, the high performance maintenance coatings market size in 2020 was split in these categories. And the value of this uh, market uh, was 825 million in 2020. A variety of coatings can be used in the high performance maintenance applications. Uh, Poxy's properties are fast drying, toughness, substantive adhesion, water resistant, and make them well suited for protecting metals and other surfaces. Uh, because of their excellent chemical solvent and abrasion resistance and flexible flexibility properties, epoxies are the most widely used type of coating primarily used for the protective coatings for floors, metal, and other materials. Now that uh, we know the importance of epoxy coatings, we will also talk about their weaknesses and learn how BSF formulation additives can be used to improve them. Having said that, uh, Tony, could you please tell us how additives can help epoxy coatings? Sure, Louis. So epoxy coatings are known and used for their excellent overall chemical and water resistance, as well as their durability. Epoxies, however, like other chemistries, may have certain coating challenges uh, that they face. For example, uh, challenges like wetting of pigment, wetting the substrate, flexibility of the film, the foaming challenges, settling of solid components in the formulation, for example, pigment settling, and last but not least, light stabilization. So epoxies are known to have a significant weakness in that they do not hold up to UV uh, exposure very well. So this last category, of course, is one area that additives can help. Additives can provide solutions to all of these challenges and enable the effective use of epoxy coatings in a variety of applications. For example, in concrete floor coatings, protective metal coatings, and a whole array of other types of coatings. The too, too broad to mention here. According to your explanation, Tony, I would like to hear which additives could you use to incorporate pigments for aesthetics uh, or protective effects? Yeah, so uh, Lewis, I would use a dispersing agent um, to incorporate pigments for aesthetic and protective effect effects. So I would break that into two uh, sections. One is for inorganic pigments. So the dispersant that we would use for inorganic pigments it would be FKFA 4620. As you can see in the graphic, it is a near 100% solid additive. So that means it brings in very little VOC. It's actually capable of use in water, solvent, and solvent-free systems. Um, it's very efficient in dispersing fillers, extenders, and inorganic pigments, especially TiO2. And when you use this, 
dispersing agent, you're going to have very good viscosity reduction as it stabilizes the pigment particles. And along with that, you will have the opportunity to increase your pigment and filler loading to further enhance your mechanical properties. And at the end of the day, you'll have a shorter dispersing time with increased milling efficiency. So FGA FA4620 is what I would recommend for dispersing inorganic pigments. Uh, in a very efficient manner. The second category of dispersing agent I would recommend is for high performance pigments. Um, what are high performance pigments? These are the pigments that um, are primarily used for their aesthetic effects. So things like carbon black, uh, phthalo, blues and greens, um, cyano, uh, reds, and, and so forth. Um, pigments that typically have fairly small particle size and large surface areas, making them very difficult to disperse, we would recommend one of our high performance dispersing agents, and that is FCA PX4733. Um, it is 100% solids as well as being tin free. So from a sustainability standpoint, this is an excellent product to take a look at. It is uh, very good with all kinds of pigments to tell you the truth. High performance pigments, which can include organic and inorganic pigments, but it can also do some of your um, other types of pigments, like even fillers. But this being a more advanced pigment, um, I would recommend it more for the high performance category. Um, so this product, FCA PX4733, in combination with FCA FA4620 are what I would recommend for addressing pigment uh, loading in a epoxy formulation. Excellent, Tony. So uh, how can saddling uh, problems uh, be addressed in an epoxy coating? Yeah, so one of the ways that we can address settling by is, incre is by increasing the low shear viscosity of the formulation. By low shear viscosity, I'm referring to the state of a formulation as it sits in a container prior to use. So the only forces that are being imposed on that formulation is really that of gravity. Um, and usually during those situations, that's when your solid components like pigments, fillers, they will have the likelihood of settling due to the force of gravity. Well, by increasing that low shear viscosity, we can reduce, if not totally eliminate, uh, that settling within the time frame of interest. Um, one product that we would market for epoxy coatings is FCA RM1900. So this is 100% solids, bio-renewably sourced castor oil thickener. Um, the FCA RM1900 and RM1920 are two versions of castor oil. Um, the last one, 1920, being a hydrogenated version of that. So these um, provide very good low shear thickening uh, good sustainability aspects are 100% solids, making them very appropriate for use in epoxy coatings. Now we are learning uh, more about the BSF FCA portfolio. Um, Tony, what can be used to address film defects and substrate wetting? Okay, so I would typically refer to the use of wetting agents or surfactants to address film defects and substrate wetting. So a wetting agent is going to lower the surface tension of a coating and allow it to overcome issues with um, wetting out the substrate. Uh, one reason why you get things like craters and pinholes is that you might have dirt or contaminant on that surface and by having a film coating that is lower in surface tension it gives you an improved uh, performance capacity for coating even over top of that dirt or that contaminant so that you don't get these film defects so i have two products that i would like to talk about in this category the first is fka fl 3740 so 3740 is a flow and leveling agent. 
So this is the product that you would use for um, uh, overcoming your cratering uh, issues. And um, it also has the excellent uh, additional property of being an air release agent. So it will also help to minimize foam, which can cause things, for example, like pinholes. Um, so 3740 is also near 100% solids making its uh, VOC contribution very low and also making it very suitable for use in epoxy coatings. The other um, product that I'd like to recommend is called FKSL 3299. So FKSL 3299 is a uh, slip and leveling agent. So it's similar to the 3740 in that it will help you improve your wetting. It will help you uh, to get good flow or, or a level profile in your film. But more importantly, it also brings one additional characteristic and that is surface modification. It will actually lower the surface energy at the, at the surface of the coating um, and give you an anti-block type of uh, performance effect. So anti-block is a situation where you put a coating to two pieces and then you stack or lay those pieces on top of one another. And later on, you're going to want to remove those pieces. And when you do, you would like for the coating to be intact and not sticking to itself and peeling off of one part. Well, that is exactly what FKSL 3299 is designed for. It can uh, provide you with that anti-block performance. So again, FKSL 3299 and FKFL 3740 are the recommended products to address film defects and substrate wetting for epoxies. One more question for you, Tony. Uh, how can an epoxy coating be softened? They're yeah, a very good co uh, question um, that hints that epoxies are very hard resins and when you have a very hard resin over time um, it can embrittle and you can see small cracks develop. Uh, the way to address that uh, from a formulation standpoint is to introduce the use of a plasticizer. Plasticizers are components that you add to the formulation that add lubricity. They lubricate the entire formulation, making it overall more flexible and softer. Um, so for epoxies, we have two very good products, uh, FKPL 5381 and FKPL 5382. Both of these are epoxidized soybean oils. They are both 100% solids, and being that they are soybean oils, they are 100% bio-renewably sourced. Um, so very good in terms of sustainability aspects. The FKPL 5382 is a more purified version uh, relative to 5381. So for cases where you need that extra purity, we have a solution for that as well. Um, being that they ha also have epoxy functionality, in particular with epoxy coatings, they can cross-link into the epoxy resin. So uh, they will not migrate out of the coating once the epoxy coating is cured. Yet they will impart that, um, that additional flexibility that's required to avoid things like embrittlement in the coating. Last but not least, why should we choose BSF additives? Well, that's a great question. Um, hopefully, the listeners have been able to, to see for themselves as I've been talking through this that we have quite a few solutions. And that hints at the breadth of our BSF formulation additives portfolio. So, First reason is that we have a lot of products, a lot of tools to solve a variety of problems. Secondly, BSF is a global company with global supply chain resources to support um, efforts across the world. 
So for those companies that uh, are in more than one region and want to use our additives, you can be assured that we have oh, the capability of supplying that support throughout a variety of regions. Tony, thank you for sharing your knowledge on how additives are an enabler of epoxy coatings. I encourage all our listeners to look into our lab assistant uh, tool to get product recommendations, compare products, uh, order samples, even more access all relevant data of our portfolio. Also, uh, I invite you to get more information on our website, www bsf.us slash dp solutions or via email at formulation dash additives dash nafta at bsf.com. You can also reach us uh, using our email contact information and we will be happy to support you and provide additional information on our products. I would just like to close and say thanks to our special guest Tony Moy and thank you to the audience for listening to us. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Lewis. I too appreciate the audience and thank you for your interest in our products and uh, joining us on this podcast. Thank you. BASF, we create chemistry.